Hi there and welcome back to another video of JPlay. Hi Markus and today I want to preview an upcoming game on the German Spielschmiede aka Gameforge and this is Nord. In Nord you will lead your Viking tribe and become the most powerful leader. But what sounds like a war-driven game is definitely more a Eurostar game with a very nice theme and pretty cool components. Of course, you look at prototype components, but I really think those look pretty nice already. But as usual, those might or might not change in the final product. The good thing about this campaign for gamers in the US, this seems to be a US friendly game. So there will be realistic shipping costs for the folks living abroad. This could be a possible setup of the game area, and you already noticed that the game board is completely variable. Of course, there are rules on how to set it up, but the level of freedom to do so is pretty high. As for the rules on how to set this up, for example, each tile has to hold one settlement, each settlement has to touch one C area or C space orthogonally, and has to be at least two spaces away from any other settlement. Also cool, this game scales really well from 2 to 4 players, but of course the level of interaction is somewhat decreased when playing with fewer players. You also have fewer fishing boats, tiles of course, and jars who are not being used are permanently placed on the Viking dragon boat, which I explain later. What you see here is a possible setup for a 2 player game. Maybe I will alter this setup a little bit during this preview to explain some special situations or to provide some examples. Each player takes the meeple and the jarl of his color, grabs three starting trash tokens from the reserve and places one meeple at the space with a value zero on the scoring track. In a two-player game you set aside six neutral fishing boats in this prototype these are represented by these discs here. In a three-player game there would be seven and eight in the full four-player game. At random you place one treasure token face down on any stone pile of a cast area. The youngest player or whatever starting player mechanism you prefer will place his jarl and one warrior on a settlement of his choice. How do you differ between warriors and workers? Good point. A meeple on a settlement is always a warrior, whereas a meeple on a land space or on a sea space on board a ship is considered to be a worker. When all players have occupied their starting settlements, you place neutral charts, so basically these orange dudes here, on all remaining settlements. By the way, this is one space, whereas this is considered to be a complete area, basically important for later scoring rounds. This dragon boat does not belong to anybody, but is really important for later turn actions. Let's get back to the game board and start the game. Again, according to the rules, the youngest player starts the game, and again, you can be a rebel and choose your starting player differently, and I'm pretty sure this won't break the game. Afterwards, everything will be done in a clockwise order anyway. So, what can you do during your turn? This nice little German overview shows what you can do. Basically, you have two main options. Option A, placing workers have has three steps to follow. Step one, you can play a treasure token from your reserve. This is purely optional. The second step, you have to place one to three land workers or one to two sea workers on the game board. Three, you attack or unite and sometimes this attack will cause a scoring round. Let's have a look at the three starting treasures first. This is the negotiator and he allows you to move one of your warriors, so a guy in a settlement, from one settlement to another, if these are united. This one is called two areas, and it allows you to place your land workers in two different land area types, so for example, mountains and cast areas. And last but not least, this one is called many man, and allows you to place up to five land workers in one area, or up to three sea workers, if there are still enough boats available, of course. 
After playing a treasure token, and that's exactly one token per turn, you can place one to three land workers or one to see sea workers. But of course, these numbers can change if you played a treasure token before. You can never, ever, ever place a land worker and a sea worker during the same turn, even if you played a treasure tile before. You also have to extend an alliance starting from a settlement where you have at least one warrior. By the way, this is an alliance, so basically a connection of two of a settlement to one or more workers. This is an alliance and this is also an alliance. It doesn't matter which colors the worker have. If they are orthogonally connected, they have to, to unite to form or extend an alliance or they have to fight. When you have found your alliance which you want to start from, you can place one to three workers, but you are only allowed to state on the same area type, so for example like this. But here this treasure token can help you with. When you played it before, you can spread your workers over two different areas, but no more. It's basically the same on a sea space. If there are still boats available in the reserve, you grab one, put your worker on it and you place it on the board. Still, you have to extend an alliance with at least one warrior of a color. Basically, this is already an alliance. If you place a worker on a space with a treasure token, like this one, you can take it. But unfortunately, you cannot use it this turn, you have to wait for your very next turn. After you have placed your workers, it's time to unite or attack, if there are any conflicts, of course. A conflict arises when the workers you just placed are touching another alliance. The very first priority is always to attack. You only unite when there is no possibility to attack. And these rules are a bit hard to get, at least for me. The requirements for an attack are as follows. First, there has to be at least one starting settlement with a warrior of your color. Two, the target settlement must not have a warrior of your color. Three, the target and the starting settlement were not allied before. So, in this simple scenario, the red warrior in the starting settlement, there is no warrior in the target settlement and both settlements were not allied before. Unfortunately, it's not that easy very often in this game. The next scenario is more realistic though. Red places two Viking dudes here and here. And there and there we have a conflict. As Red has warriors in those two settlements, he cannot attack. But in the village here in the south, there is no Red warrior. So theoretically, he could attack from the village here. But these two villages were allied before, so Red has to attack from the village in the east. Yes, this can be really tricky to find out, but that's basically a very unique element of this game. You always have to check which alliances you will form, where you can attack and where not. Okay, how does the attack look like? Let me demonstrate this with another example. So, Red placed three workers on these areas here, connecting all three villages or settlements now. None of them were allied before and he has warriors in both northern settlements. So he can decide from where he wants to attack the southern village. In this example, let's do the attack from the settlement in the northwestern part. First, you have to find the shortest route from the start to the target settlement. In this case, this could be these two workers or these two workers. Then you remove all your workers from this route. The first one immediately dies. Poor guy. But as he's died, he's placed on the dragon boat. You put him on the space with the lowest number. In the case all places are occupied, the workers go back to the appropriate player. So no party for those guys in Valhalla. When all attacks are being resolved and the boat is full, we will have to conduct a scoring vote. But I explain that a little bit later. 
that. Coming back to the attack example, first one died and enjoys a good pint of beer. The second worker, if any, will become a warrior in the target village. So, a very good way to increase your influence. If there is a third worker, he would become a warrior in the starting settlement. A possible fourth worker would die again, and so on. There is a handy overview that will explain this to you. Also, keep in mind that there could be more than one attack to be resolved. So, in this case, there is a second conflict, but as Red again has two warriors in both settlements, there will be no attack, though both alliances will just unite. But wasn't there another option than placing workers? Yes, absolutely. Option B would be to defeat another Jar. How does this work? Again, there are several conditions you have to meet. The first condition, there has to be another Jarl in the settlement. Makes sense, right? Second, the active player has to have at least two warriors in the same village as the above Jarl, as he is a very tough guy. The active player also has to have more warriors of his color than any other player in the same village. And last but not least, this settlement has to have a connection to the dragon boat, as we want to have a very fancy Viking funeral. If all those above conditions have been met, the player can choose not to play option A, but this option B. As soon as he has defeated the Jarl, he places him on the dragon boat, again using the space with the lowest number. And the active player, basically the guy who defeated the Jarl, will gain the appropriate amount of victory points, 12 points in this case. If the Jarl is occupying the last space on the dragon boat, there will be a scoring round again. If the active player cannot place any workers and is not able to defeat a Jarl, there will also be a scoring round. In Nord, there are four scoring rounds and one endgame treasure scoring, so you will spend a considerable amount of time scoring some points. In the first and the third scoring round, you get points for resource shipments. Whereas in round 2 and 4, you score points for your warriors. So, both factors will be important for your victory. Of course, the scoring rounds will count for all players, independent who initiated the scoring round. Again, there are some conditions to score points for resource shipments. The player has to have at least one warrior in the settlement he wants to score. Then, the player must not have the least amount of warrior in this settlement. Equal amount of warriors is still okay though. And, of course, all workers who could ship some resources have to be allied to this settlement. So in this case, Red could score in this settlement as he has not the least amount of warriors, but he would not be able to score this settlement here because he's green is definitely in the majority here. For a forest area the player controls, the player gets one point. So for the complete area and not for the single space. But the player gets one point for each mountain space. This time it's for the space and not the complete area. So mountain spaces are more valuable than forest spaces. Odin needs steel. After the scoring you return all workers to the appropriate players. But Jarls stay on the boat and will be moved to the spaces with the lowest number. So in this case the orange dude would move here. You will place new treasure tokens face down on empty stone piles. Empty means in this case there must not be a worker or another treasure token. All mountain workers who have delivered successfully will be returned to their owner as the mine unfortunately collapsed. Wow. The second and the fourth scoring round will check if your warriors are well fed. All warriors need one unit of food. The settlement itself produces one unit of food for one warrior of each player. So there will be enough food for a settlement where all players have only one warrior. Each forest space adjacent to the settlement that is occupied with a worker is also producing one unit of food for one warrior of the same player. And the same counts for sea spaces with workers. The color of the workers does not matter here. They will all feed all warriors. 
Every warrior who is not supplied with food will die. Oops. But he will not be placed on the dragon boat. He will directly go to the reserve of the corresponding player, as it's a shame not to die in battle. Afterwards, each player determines how many warriors are supplied with food and scores the appropriate amount of victory points, which is basically the amount of warriors squared. So 1 is 1, 2 is 4, 3 is 9. I think you get the picture. After this scoring round, there will be a huge storm that will kill all workers on boats. The ships go back to the public supply and the workers go back to the corresponding player. Again, no ale with Odin. After the fourth and final scoring round, you will immediately score your treasures. For once, you get points for different kind of treasures. So, if you're able to find and not use six different kind of treasure, you score 15 points. For at least three treasures of the same kind, you score 9 points and 16 for 4, 25 for 5 and so on. After you have done your final scoring, the Viking with the most victory points is the winner. As usual, I keep my final words as short as possible. But Nord is definitely an interesting game with some very unique mechanics. But you really have to love brain games like this, as you can sometimes sit there and sit there, think for ages where to place your next workers in order to optimize your supplies, your attack or how to prepare to defeat a job. The look and feel is really nice and you're just looking at prototype components. Even the theme is very nice as Vikings seem to become the new zombies in the gaming market. Of course, Everyone who's looking for a great Viking themed adventure or war game might be a little bit disappointed here. The average Euro core gamer should definitely have a look at this. You will find a link to the campaign on Gameforge once it's started. I really hope you enjoyed my little preview and explanation here and hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. Until then, bye bye.